Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. And this video music is coming from. Okay, that's my device. Hold on for a second, guys. Hello, so, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. And this video music is coming. All right, sorry for that glitch and good evening and thank you so much for joining in. Uh, my name is Ketan. I welcome you to this episode. I still haven't named it and I will figure it out as I go ahead and I'll talk about why figuring out is, is important and probably I have one of the best persons to help me uh, demystify a lot of those questions. Uh, why and, and a little bit about this session this program how did it come into picture uh you know i i call there's there's a concept called the million dollar employee that i started this is this is a brainchild that i've been working on and the idea came from uh my journey as an employee you know th there are three stages of career or a work interface that i talk about one is typically when we get a job or when we get a role second is you know when when we get a job or a role how do we sustain and manage that role well and the third piece is how do we grow in that role, right? And my entire construct is about being a very, very valuable employee, extraordinary employee. I will not talk about, talk about leadership. I'll not talk about mentoring. I'll not talk about organizations. I'll talk about what each one of us need to do to get what, become one of the best employees and become a million dollar employee. There are six things that I identified in this journey, which worked for me, which worked really well for me, which worked well for people that I've been interacting with and observing. And one key element there is about actions. And that actually triggered the conversation today. And before I introduce you to the guest, a little bit about my journey and why this session actually started. I started my coaching journey and my writing journey about two and a half years back. And, and I remember when I was, you know, holding my first article, I would review it every day, edit it and you know, be worried about putting it on social media. What will people think? People would judge me. I was just holding myself back. I waited for a day and two and three and every single day, every morning when I would get up, I would open it and I'll myself edit it and I'll say, okay, I'm going to post it tomorrow. Now, it went on for 16 days and my coach had it. He asked me, Keetan, what's holding you? Why are you not putting it out in the world? The reason I gave him was I wanted to be perfect. But somewhere there was a you know fear that I had that was holding me, the fear of being judged, the fear of not coming from one of the most established school systems. And my, my own confidence on my language at one point in time was very, very weak. So he made me commit to post it the next day. It went out. I got some 600, 700 views. 600, 700 views. views for that were not important. But what it turned into later, into, into 600 posts, into three to four million views, into you know speaking to five and a half thousand people, into it translated into a book. Now that one single tiny action translated into something which I which I cherish. I, I, I can't live without writing and sharing even today. But amongst this, there's something else that was holding me. You know, I've been wanting to go live, talk to people, get the best people from the market to share you know, their point of view, have a conversation with them live. But I have only been planning. I've been planning for seven months, eight months. I've been reviewing tools, systems, people, watching others. And you know, I've been waiting for that perfect movement and the perfect goal to go live. But on 29th or 30th of December, there's a courier that landed up in my home. Uh, and this was from Sham. Sham had just uh, published his book. And I'm one of those privileged people to have received a you know, signed, handwritten note from him. That, that also had four costers. And uh, I, it didn't strike me. But when I, when I, it was like a puzzle. You know, when I, when I solved for it and when I read it, you guys can see it, right? Stop overthinking, start doing. Now, that was the movement I set 
what is that one thing I've been wanting to do, but I've not done it. And it was about the video cast. I decided to go live on 7th of January. So I did my first session with Dr. Vivek Man Singh about goals. And for this sex, uh, session, the person who inspired me, whose posters inspired me to reach here to start this session, uh, is here with me. So Sham, thank you for that nudge, for that inspiration. And thank you very much for joining us today. I will not talk much about Sham today. Uh, you can go to LinkedIn, you can, you can check his website. There's a lot that you would understand about him. But between my conversation with him and today, he, he, he went through a personal uh, challenge. He, he lost one of the heroes of his life, but he still showed up today. Thank you, Sham, so much for this. So we'll start with, you know, a quick conversation, a quick point on where, how are you feeling right now? And a little bit about your hero. I'm sure every story has inspirations sure. that can impact. So welcome, Sham, and over to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. And those coasters that my lovely cousins who run a, a firm who do a sustainable gifting did that. Uh, so thanks to them as well. My state of mind, uh, Ketan, is uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, and as I shared on LinkedIn with uh, you and everyone else, um, I actually uh, lost my grandfather last uh, Sunday. And he was a hero. He was 98 years old. And he's always been a hero because of his modesty, humility, uh, commitment to doing uh, and connected to our topic today and uh, always ensuring that, you know, he used to say also, um, uh, one of the things he used to say was don't live in your head, basically, you know, it has to, you have to meet the world and you have to actually do something. Uh, we have a tendency to uh, live entire lives in our heads and at some point we need to kind of get out of this and actually translate it into action. Um, so, um, Anyway, so to your, in the same way as you got up, got up and got going uh, in his memory, I'd like to have a great conversation and add some value to our guests today. So let's start. Wow, thank you. Thank you. And welcome every single of you to, who are giving us your Saturday today. Uh, we will do our best to have fun in the next 60 minutes. Sham can definitely be far better at having fun. I'm still learning on that. Uh, just to call out, uh, while I'm, I'm there on the stage having a conversation with Sham, uh, ask any questions. The idea we would we would want it to be conversational. There's no structure behind it because there are a few questions that I have. Imagine I'm the spokesperson there who can take a question to Sham. A very very important call out. Easy questions to me, tougher ones to Sham, right? Because because he he's the he's the guest here and I'm the host, so I'm supposed to take totally, on the totally <laughs> up for that. Uh, <laughs> ready, <question>. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, good. So okay, you know, hmm. yeah. All right, so we will begin with uh, understanding about your journey, uh, this transition from a corporate journey where you grew up to the ranch, you, you had a uh, stellar career, and then you decided to come back to India, India quit, start something yep. of, of your own. I'm sure there would have been a lot of movement of reflection, doing, action, decisions. Yep. Take us through about uh, a little bit about what went through and, and about your uh, journey, Shah. Sure. So I'll share a little bit of a um, um, journey and then maybe a few kind of ideas on what went through my head at that time. So I had spent uh, about, um, um, well, I, I quit my job to do my own thing after 18 years of work. And uh, out of those 18, uh, about 15 years I spent uh, outside India. In I started in the US and then I went to uh, the UK. When I started in the US, it was all, you know, I went uh, just before 9-11. So a lot, lots of things changed uh, in America at that time. And then I found myself in the Silicon Valley, not really kind of engaging. And I felt really out of place. And my heart wasn't really in the life and the work there. And I jumped at an opportunity to move to England. So I spent quite a lot of time in England and enjoyed it, played cricket, you know, um, you know, made, made uh, enjoyed travel, enjoyed work, did a lot of different things, did marketing, engineering, sales, operations, all types of things. And then heart wanted to kind of move back to India to be with family, uh, to spend time with my grandparents. And then I came back and then I found myself uh, really moving into the people side of things, really enjoyed working on uh, as, you know, people problems, as they say, but it's much deeper than that. So we'll just say that uh, for the sake of our conversation. And I ended up uh, leading HR and also leading training for uh, on the company I was in. It's been in the news recently uh, with the NVIDIA acquisition and SoftBank and all of that. Um, and um, 
then at some point i realized that i had spent 18 years in corporate world in the same organization doing different things in different countries but what i wanted to do was experiment with my own thing and that experiment is ongoing <laughs> it will be 2 uh, years in april so i quit just around the time of uh, when covid hit us and then i continued uh, with my decision to move forward with it and then i spent most of my time training and uh, coaching uh, today uh, with many multiple organizations and individuals so that's me in a nutshell <laughs> so far what has happened and and what 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 were the most difficult moments you know of between planning and action you know i i've been uh, at least the the thing that confuses me or probably stretches me is okay the the point between a perfect plan and mm. an action which comes first is it chicken and egg should you act yeah. first and then plan plan first act well, how how do you yeah. essentially deal with uh, yeah. uh, this this entire type what me i think a great point on chicken and egg uh, because that's so true <laughs> and i think the challenge is we live in our heads okay so considering you know during our schooling during our education pretty much everything we are taught is to use our heads so we kind of live in our heads so we learn math we learn analysis we learn planning so planning is clearly a head activity it is not a heart activity so where we fail i failed is about the fact that i did not bring the heart enough into the conversation okay so this is where it it improved over time when the head would say i need to go abroad to make money or i need to get this job because the paycheck is better or this experience will look better on the cv or you know uh, this uh, this job is, has better prospects all of this is the head kind of working things through analyzing figuring things out putting a spreadsheet together uh, i was literally with a client a uh, little earlier today and we were talking about his decision to move back to india from from another country and we were talking about how to manage this head and heart so one of the things i have learned through this idea called the enneagram is use your head follow your heart and listen to your gut use your head follow your heart listen to your gut what does this mean use your head everyone uses it we all live our entire lives in our heads making things up or solving problems following nice. the heart we kind of lose touch with it over time and listen to your gut we are never taught when does the gut come into play when the heart and uh, head and heart have a conflict when the head is saying go right and heart is saying go left the gut has got to come into play and help you do that so as a as an idea of where my decision making was tough for example coming back to india after 15 years abroad i got all kinds of feedback you know, stay be there you know let your kids be in england etc you know you have a you can create a better life over there but my heart was made up i have to follow my heart okay so when you have to make a big decision i kind of try to that you know swami vivekananda saying in matters of heart and mind follow the heart right so the heart has to be involved in the big decisions and if you follow your heart in the big decisions whatever problems that come after that the head can solve we are good at it we can we are problem solvers we learn how to solve problems the entire life you spend in education you learn how to solve problems if your heart has put you on the right path then the head can figure it out but if the head is kind of figuring it out up front and you eventually take a path that the heart is not behind that becomes a conflict that's really hard to manage later i think that's that's i don't know at least from in the background that i grew uh, mm-hmm. you're right using heart was not even a conversation it was all about you have to be sharp to use your brain you your mind everything was about you know uh, planning and life and decisions and uh, only hindi in only movies used to talk about coming more from heart or listening to something which which is not being processed between between the years and i'm glad you're talking about it and and i've also realized over time that there is far more to us as human beings which is which is a mix of all these threes that you talked about robin sharma beautifully speaks about heart set head set health set and soul set the other four concepts that he talks about right so and many people that i follow and that i interact and what i'm also hearing from you is there is far more to us than the head only and yep. and once you bring that into alignment and, and use it well a lot of answers will start coming in. having said that right. i would also add, i don't know that's my point of view that the the need for a perfect solution or an answer that actually stops us a lot right so i True. think probably he- heart helps you overcome that at least that's that's the experience that i that's had. right and i like to think about that as you know there's no perfect emotion right the head says you know follow perfect numbers perfect formula you know clean it up a bit 
but there's no perfect emotion the heart understands that there's no perfection so uh, if the heart comes into play it's you know you kind of know when you feel it when you see it uh, and it's very difficult to explain some of the most deepest insights you have are the ones you cannot put into words so uh, anything that you really feel you need to follow it you may choose not to do it that's your that's the head deciding but you need to understand right so that's important and and see uh, what i understand is you have been a behavioral science practitioner and you studied quite a lot about that i hear a lot of that from you uh what what are you know th- uh, some of the concepts or theories or or hypothesis around reasons why we overthink and not act or we don't do yeah uh, um what has changed over the last few decades really i think is the amount of choice yeah if you actually even if you take us back uh, to our own schooling our own early education when i was finishing school 1996 there were very few options available to me well, like two or three you know doctor engineer medical lawyer few few things like that and uh, you kind of eliminated very easily and you kind of chose one because you eliminated a few and that was the reasonable option to take yeah today what has happened is there is way too much choice so i think the uh, thinking analysis part of it you spend a lot of time in it because there is more to analyze right so mm. we have to i think be kind to ourselves and understand that we are spending a lot of time analyzing because there is more to analyze if you have 30 choices you will spend more time in analysis if i make it three choices you will spend lesser time in analyzing most likely right most likely you will spend lesser time in analyzing and probably make a choice quicker probably because you know even three choices can be tough sometimes i want to acknowledge that also so right now in terms of career the big issue is there is way too much choice yeah and there is a major difficulty in uh, picking something because the situation has changed there is lot of choice okay but the mindset has not changed the mindset was those days there are few choices you make one and stick to it for 30 years right you are a banker my dad was in a bank for 30 years plus my grandpa was in the ministry of commerce for like 40 years you pick one path and you spend 30 40 years in it that mindset unfortunately has not changed but the choices have multiplied so we need to change our mindset to match the context so the mindset has to change that if there is so much choice if i get a choice wrong it's okay i'll figure it out so it has to be more in a project management perspective more agile in our thinking in our mindset that we need to pick something we need to take a chance you know there's no right career there's no perfect decision here because the choices are evolving over time very rapidly so you can change you can improve you can evolve i think choice overload is the technical term here we are um ending up in that netflix kind of browsing zone where we end up browsing but not choosing so we end up browsing but not picking we spend half an hour kind of flicking flicking through the choices but not actually uh, choosing something can i use a actual experiment can i w- walk you through an experiment yeah, please, that was done? Please, please, yeah. please. so this experiment was done in california outside a grocery store it's called the jam experiment we can google it and check it out jam. as well if you like later the jam the jam so what they did was they took about 24 something like that 24 36 varieties of jam and kept it outside the shop and they offered free samples to people saying you know taste it why not 80% of the people who walked by tasted it only 20% bought the jam okay next they reduced the number of samples to 6 there were only 6 jam samples varieties outside the shop and they were still calling people to taste it fewer people tasted it but many 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 more people bought it So what happens is, when you have a lot of choice, you'll sample like your Netflix browsing, but you won't pick. So if you have fewer samples, fewer people will sample, but more will actually take a decision. So this experiment tells us, reducing choices increases possibility of action, right? So if you go onto LinkedIn and say, suppose you're a marketing, you know, you want marketing person and you want to find a marketing, you say marketing manager, marketing director, marketing what you know, analyst, data analyst, whatever the job is, there will be a million options, right? You need to find a way to design a filter that reduces these options. Pick the country, pick the location, pick the kind of company, pick the sector, 
try to narrow down your options otherwise it's going to be absolutely debilitating so first thing address choice overload find a way to limit your options today if you're going on netflix say i'm going to watch a telugu movie i'm going to watch pushpa okay pushpa is not on netflix it's on amazon prime so you'll go to amazon prime and i'll watch pushpa the rise right so limit limit that but if you open it up and say i will pick something that's it half an hour will go so 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 that's that's raises a lot of thought but uh, let me let me put a context here one the examples that you gave are you know about quick decisions and probably in so called reversible decisions if i would say or sure if i if i have to decide to pick up a movie while well, everything is irreversible because there's a time that we're putting in but yeah i think i can i can easily switch on between or between one program to other on netflix mm-hmm. now these become extremely tough when we have to make choices about our lives and especially if i talk about career right yep. because uh we don't know what we will get into what the organization would be will it be good for us there are five people who will say good there are five people who will say not good are there ways hacks methodologies tools that you have found to be valuable to you know reduce this choice overload as you said or or sure. funnel or make it better is 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 there something that you can share with audience which can which can help them i can relate to the problem now uh, yes but yes. Uh, what what would you do to uh, enable actions and quicker actions here okay so let's take shall i take an example of uh, and then i'll connect it to uh, career can i take the action of diet diet eat, eat healthy okay we want okay. to eat healthy yeah we that's a big decision right we want to eat healthy yeah and there's a million diets out there million i don't know fads out there keto diet whatever you know so many types of things right so how do you pick yeah how do you make a decision to eat healthy there's enough research on this you can you know read like for days about all the stuff that they're doing the one idea that i've picked and there's ted talks about this various things about it the only thing that really kind of really works in the long term if you want to eat healthy stop buying bad food i was going to use a harder word there but stop <laughs> buying you know stuff <laughs> that is not good for you you know so if yeah. you don't stock your uh, kitchen with you know stuff that's not good for you the next time you walk by the kitchen for a snack you will not pick up chocolate and chips and all that stuff right so here's the model the model is daniel kahneman's thinking fast and slow fantastic book really hard to read but the idea is that there are two types of thinking and it's not like the brain is split into two it's just that there are two types of thinking one is the fast thinking you're driving a car you're on a motorbike you see somebody in your way you swerve right you don't think you just intuitively move right because you're protecting yourself so that is the fast intuitive quick decision making that's the one that like you said you know largely reversible if i swerve this way i can swerve that way also it's reversible the other one is the slow thinking the slow thinking is the rational slow working things out analysis thinking okay the idea here is this use your slow thinking to take the big decisions that will ensure that your quick decisions are good right so if you don't buy stuff like that when you are able to control yourself in a in your um if you are for example let's connect it back to career right so if you are going to um find a new job yeah take some big decisions that are helping your smaller decisions later on right so what is your sector you know don't if you have chosen for example i was in tech for 20 years right so i took a tech i did not change tech so i was not moving again i was moving roles within tech right so i had chosen that i would remain in the tech area but change roles now i could have done it differently everyone has different choices but you make your big decisions and stick by them and then make those reversible decisions within that scope basically right so if you take a, a role in let's say like yourself in let's say hr right so you've chosen hr within hr we'll move around if after starting a career in hr sales and marketing is always calling to you right you either make a choice and then go and commit to that or within hr you make all these reversible decisions and play around with the career so that but the hr first big decision has to be a some uh, a deeper level of commitment that's fantastic and and if i may add uh, i don't know if it's related to what you're saying but uh, a, a decision or or a goal to me has helped right because when when we set a goal establishing that this is who i want to be or this is what i want to do 
I, I have found that the choice overload somehow is reduced because then I'm not focusing on what I shouldn't be doing. So, so, and, and this is what I've learned in the overall goal setting or the OKR practice that choose what not to do is as choosing what not to do is yes. as important as you know yes. choosing what yes. to be done. Yes. First, filter out and remove what should not be in your reference. And I'm hearing you also talk about that that you know the big buckets, the focus yes. areas, the large pieces. And it's very interesting to look at it, saying decide the larger ones and within that keep playing. Or if you have to do an orbit shift, then do an orbit shift. Then there's no sure. if and but. Then just clear exactly. that shift and then figure out a plan around that. And That's and choice it. overload, addressing choice overload is exactly what you learn from any strategy or marketing course one on one, one on one. Marketing one on one strategy one on one will tell you. Strategy is more about choosing what not to do. Or any strategy person running an organization strategy will say. Uh, what we call sometimes uh, non-negotiables or things that we are definitely not going into uh, that creates clarity people find um, freedom within uh, confines so if you tell them you ca- you are free to do anything you want as long as you don't do xyz that's freedom right because you've given me clarity in the same way if i say hey i am when i return to india i said i'll do anything i want within india so that that restriction actually gives me freedom so freedom can freedom and uh, constraints are not opposites actually constraints can give you incredible amount of freedom uh, to play around for example i am slowly going into other uh, social media but for example uh, linkedin is where you also write a lot right so once you have decided on linkedin you within linkedin you play around with it so every day you don't decide i should i write on that one that one this one no i just within this constraint i will explore so if you are looking for a job and you want to you want to create constraints this sector tech startup um you know if you want to play in that area give it that time give it that uh, uh, time to actually make something happen and then uh, and then something will actually because you're not kind of shifting moving you're giving it that time some some things need time to actually uh, make things happen and and what i'm also hearing from you is and if i put it in the in the thinking and the doing part uh take decisions on the bigger thing uh so that the smaller ones are faster to move is is what i'm i'm understanding we are usually doing the yes. other way around because we haven't taken you know the bigger decisions the smaller minute ones are troubling you because it, it doesn't have an anchor or you know a, a reference frame that's 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 a fantastic way to look at you're it you're absolutely right so uh, i have uh, for example i'm uh, i coach a lot of people through their uh, career transitions right you know what sometimes what happens is you get a new job and you start a new job within 2 weeks you're like should i change my should i look at other jobs also it's too early right so once you have taken the big decision to move here you have to give it that time to make it work so if you are thinking in your first 100 days if you are thinking i'm going to look elsewhere also now if you are unhappy and you want to change that's fine i mean uh, you're just being doing justice to your situation but once you're committed to a project you want to just commit to that project I mean, there's those examples of uh, jobs, and you know, Zuckerberg wearing only black shirts because they don't think about their clothes, right? You know, again, I don't know if it's true or not, but the 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 point is this: the point is you negate certain things out of your head, basically. You don't think about it. You and uh, Chetan Bhagat talks about outsourcing cooking to a cook. I mean, he wrote about it, and I heard about it in a talk a long time back, in saying that certain things I don't think about. You know, it's not something that is the smaller decisions. I've made the big decision. I've hired a cook. or i have decided i'm only going to wear black this month and then every day it is not entering your system as something you have to put some energy into you may choose choose other things right you may not choose clothes or cooking but i'm just saying as a way of reducing your overthinking you can take the big decisions that ensure exactly how you said that the smaller stuff doesn't come in the way no i think it just a uh, 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 incident popped up in my head this was mm-hmm. Uh, when when i was with aditya birla group and we used to deal with you know one of the one of the best lawyers in india in labor law and mm. uh, invariably many of the times when the invoice would come from his office uh, it would it would have some error you know biggest lawyer in the india and the invoice would have some error or something like that and when we were having a chat with him so one of my seniors was very very close to him said sir you know what is best right so should we expect your uh, invoices and any other deals to be perfect hmm. he said that's not my expertise i create value in the work that i do and i don't want to shift my focus to things that doesn't matter or not not good at right hmm. somebody else has to do it if the person has to learn fine but don't expect me 
to be really good at invoice creation because my focus the value that i add the impact that i create is in something else and i will continue focus and perhaps the reason he was one of the best in 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 his field so and i've i've yeah. worked with a lot of senior executives who were come only white shirts i've seen yeah. them i've literally seen this happening and they used to say i i don't want this decision to happen so i would i only have white shirts and khaki pants and i'm super awesome with that so absolutely now here now coming i'm trying to understand from uh, your reading so probably from the behavior in science mm-hmm. you know is thinking there are people who say are thinkers there are people who we say are doers is it is it a by birth talent yes no if it is if it is yes then is there a way one can become better at it what has been what what are these few trips uh, tips and tricks and hacks that you can share that has possibly worked so one is it is it by birth is it a natural talent and second how can one become better at it mm oh well, we can you know <clears throat> we we can all think and we can all do right uh, the, the the question then becomes uh, when should we think when should we do really right how do you decide when you are when you need to think and when you should do right um, you know krishnamurthy once said analysis is the denial of action if you are analyzing you are denying action right and if you are mm-hmm. acting you are denying analysis you know it's basically in a way opposites right like either you are analyzing something which automatically implies that you are not acting on it or you are acting on it which means you should not be analyzing like if you are driving a car you are not thinking about what is happening inside the motor and what the you know where the fuel is going you know you're not you're just driving the car right but when you are designing a car you're not driving it you're figuring it out right so it's two two things right but the way to look at it really is uh, suppose we are riding a bicycle right it sways right you turn this way that way this way that way we people talk about balance we talk a lot about balance right? yin and yang we talk about balance balance is non existent right even if it exists it exists for a microsecond or a you know whatever very very small period of time what actually happens is we are permanently correcting we are permanently correcting our balance left right left right, left, right. this way, micro corrections right mm-hmm. the question then becomes when should i correct so when you are doing too much analysis you should start doing when you are too much doing you should do analysis okay that's my first level answer to that question now the question then becomes how do you decide right the question is not whether you should only do analysis or you should only do if you go back to our own history in indian philosophy there are karma yogis right mm-hmm. and people who basically achieve salvation through doing right and then there are the philosophers who achieve salvation through thinking philosophers right what we are talking about is we need to think also we need to do also at some point you need to stop the thinking and start doing so what you need to realize what where that line is where that line is where i will stop my thinking and i should start doing right and for a lot of people it is a very personal choice it is a very personal choice and that is where the heart and the head i think is a very useful model okay the head no it loves analysis it will keep on doing <laughs> it will open a spreadsheet it will open a tool it will put numbers you know data 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 carry on right numbers 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 at some point the heart has to come in and say enough is enough right i need to make a choice right so the the, the that line when you need to cross is a very personal one for that we need to know why we are doing what we are doing so what do we need out of let's say a career change okay we're thinking 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 not taking action you you know i i went through the same thing about linkedin lives you know thinking thinking should i should i not should i should i not should i should not? at some point you have to decide why you are doing it and jump over the fear most cases fear is at the heart of the matter and fear uh, actually even though we think it's from the heart is actually from the head it's a thought it's a thought that emerges and really uh, so you have to attack it <laughs> you have to attack it with fact and say what's the worst thing that can happen let me take social media as an example social media the if you are trying to talk on social media or if you are trying to apply to a job right we think that the entire world will come crashing down if we lose an interview or we don't get to uh, get through the interview or if a post of ours doesn't go doesn't isn't interesting but the point is the world works in such a way today that if you fail it automatically means that very few people saw you it's not like you're standing in front of a million people and failing the if you write a post and only 10 people see it only 10 people saw it no what did you lose <laughs> right yeah. that is one way of rationalizing it also so getting over fear ketan i think that's very very key to basically saying that um 
you have to stop that analysis and get over that but somebody has said i think asked yeah. us the exact opposite question <laughs> no i I'll, in fact rohit has a question which is contextual so i'm, I'm pulling it in yeah. how yeah, did yeah. the mess cause due to action without analysis brilliant yes. thank you rohit brilliant brilliant question rohit so this is exactly what i'm saying so either we are doing too much action without analysis and too much analysis without action so now the question becomes where is that thought coming to you from right am i doing 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 sometimes sorry to lapse into hindi mujhe pata hi nahi hai ki main kya kar raha hu you know mujhe pata hi nahi hai ki why why am i doing this right i'm doing 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 but i've lost touch with why then you sit and analyze and sometimes you think i'm only thinking i'm not doing enough the thought comes to you immediately act the key is to immediately shift the key is to take one quick micro action as you would say ketan take one small action immediately to get out so when you are cycling and you are like leaning to the right you don't think should i turn should i not you immediately turn right you don't like spend some time i'll stay here like this for a little while and then i'll no you make immediate so so you take one small action to do something or if you're doing too much um, you take one small thing okay i'm going to take 15 minutes and just think about this a little bit and then you analyze right that one action can shift that uh, energy significantly i think that's really important to acknowledge it and take one action not overthinking it one action on the spot can actually literally rewire your brain yeah and in fact there is one, one book that i love is 5 uh, second rule by uh, you know you, you guys should definitely read that or check it out now uh, mel robbins talks speaks about something interesting she she has this concept of when you have to create that shift in your mind just take a pause and say 5 4 3 2 1 go and suddenly you would see yourself making decisions try it out it has worked for me in certain instances but do grab a copy of that book or go on linkedin yeah. and watch a uh, youtube and watch a video it's 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 something similar to what uh, sham is uh, just mentioned about i think uh, the, the the key there is being intentional and actually acknowledging it if you have already acknowledged the fact that there is a mess because of action that itself is an answer that itself is something we need to stop and think about and that thinking will be the analysis automatically so that is uh, that's the first step okay there there is somebody called linkedin user i'm not able to see the name there a lot of comments uh, yeah. the person is upset because this was supposed to be an hr discussion but it is not at all with you trying hard to appreciate logic <laughs> it's not cool so i'm sorry sorry for that if if there's a confusion that has happened and thank you for your time here but this was not a hr discussion this was more about life and career that's what i drive my conversations with i will be happy to bring in something about hr or if you think you need to know something mm. do reach out but uh, happy to answer questions on hr if there's both of us have uh, exposure yeah but, but again yeah. focus yeah. right choices i will reduce the choices right yeah, now yeah, yeah. exactly that's also true <laughs> something about that i will with with the time that we have uh, sure now the two to one trying to bring it together so so let's say there is there is a action that we have taken there is a plan that we mm-hmm. we speak about how do we stay committed or accountable for our own actions right yeah. uh, it, it is it is perhaps the toughest thing organizations are designed around having managers or system which will hold us accountable mm-hmm. when when i was growing up at least my family and parents were the one who would somewhere hold me accountable for Uh, how do one do it how important is to measure progress are there any practices and hacks that you would like to share with people that has worked with for you sure yeah 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 you know goal setting and staying accountable again i think a large amount of what we are taught or what we do is head driven like all of us know smart goals right specific measurable actionable results and what is that time time bound right so it's a very um, very head oriented analytical approach to goals and that means that you decide something you got to make it specific measurable it's a very analytical um, way of looking at goals and i want to offer an alternative which is called hard goals it's called a uh, heartfelt animated uh, required and uh, difficult okay this is another model uh, for goal setting heartfelt do you actually want to do it do you know are you feeling positive energy for it right mm. i mean we wanted to do this uh, live session we could have had smart goal for it but you know once the heartfelt is there i don't you know, i'm i'm here right with you having a chat we are having a chat about it right um animated you know actually think about what it will look like what it will feel like 
have we visualized what that end goal is right third is it required is it something you really need to work on you know is this something i really need to do right now think about that and that will lead to certain thinking and last is difficult we all like a challenge right we all love to have a challenge yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we are all wired to do something little beyond that comfort zone no? little, just to get us kind of i have not done this before or i have not really achieved this before let me kind of give it little bit of difficulty i'm not saying like make it a marathon tomorrow if you have never run before right like me um that's not the point the point is a little bit of difficulty little bit of excitement so heartfelt animated required and uh, difficult can be a slightly different uh, way of looking at goals and then um ketan the, the you know we talk about accountability a lot and as coaches coaches can be accountable friends accountability partners you go to a gym you have somebody who will, you know what what do you call a gym buddy gym buddy or whoever you exercise with Th- those are all great okay i'm not, i have nothing against them but if you are trying to go deep into this the idea should be to negate the need for accountability right we don't wake up in the morning and uh, once you are in you know a certain age you don't wake up and wait for your mom to tell you to brush your teeth right you are accountable to keeping take, taking care of your dental care <laughs> right so you are accountable for your health at us after a certain age right in that same way we have to take accountability ourselves so we need to address the fact that why it is why it is not there right why at some not? level yeah so uh, if we are talking about accountability my uh, you know exploration into that investigation into that with anybody would be to try and take accountability for yourself which would be for example for eating healthy you stop buying junk right stop buying junk you are being accountable to your goal of eating healthy you want to change your career you take accountability to meet a few people apply to a new job find a coach find a mentor whatever you decide to do right you take accountability for that accountability partners come into play when you have difficulty agreed everyone we all have difficulty in going through um you know and achieving our goals no doubt i mean i struggle through enough things myself for me accountability is through a coach i am a coach myself i have a coach as well right so having coaches mentors support system works for me uh for things that i find it hard to be accountable for but the end goal is not to always have accountability partner the end goal is try and find what is stopping you from being accountable to yourself yeah and just just on a personal experience the daily journaling thing has been proven to be very very powerful thing where yeah. i hold myself accountable and uh, it's it's a very it's a desired state but as sham said that's a desired state we all want uh, but it, it is it is the self mastery is not easily attainable there are times when i need a accountability coach externally where i need my boss to come into the picture when i'm able there need times when i'm able to do things that i'm supposed to do yes uh, i can take a question here it's it's slightly uh, not that it may be directly linked to it but very important question now upendra is asking uh mm. upendra first of all thank you for joining in uh, his question is i'm about to start my career journey i uh, would love to have your thoughts what should i keep in mind whether thoughts would uh, whatever thoughts would be additional to my learning thank you so that's that's what uh, upendra has to ask hmm upendra thank you uh, you know great question you have transported me back to when i started my career and uh, um, i'm trying to remember some advice i received and i'll try to blend in what uh, i have to say in the context of today um there's always a lot of uh, debate about you know what's more important attitude or skill right skill slash experience i'm saying skills and experience is the same and when you're starting out your career you've learned some skills but you've never deployed them so having that experience is not there yet if you have just started you may have done some internships you may have experienced some work in a different context but you never kind of worked uh, in a in a full time uh, environment in a uh, you know organizational structure what you do have is great energy attitude aptitude uh, one thing any, any coach would start by saying is focus on your strength okay be aware of what you don't have be aware of what weaknesses or anything that you need to work through but focus on the strength right so uh, if you are starting out your corporate career focus on attitude focus on aptitude focus on learning that you have picked up and try to present it in a way that matches the need of the other person uh, who is hiring you or helping you grow and so on do not try to uh, fill in the blanks for something that you don't have for example if you don't have that much experience talk about your aptitude that will actually uh, get you in 
So when they say hire for attitude, not skill, right? That applies to people who are starting their career. When you go uh, further, further, and you have things to show in your skill section in a resume, and in your um, CV and LinkedIn profile, etc., that becomes relevant. Right now, attitude, aptitude. I have done. I can do this. I have the ability. I have energy, passion. Those words will be way more useful on top of your educational qualifications if you're just getting started. So focus on what you have and continue to work honestly, accept what you don't and continue to work on what you don't yet have. I think that's very important. Thank you. Bupendra, if, if I may share my perspective, uh, uh, you know, freshers are hired for potential, not for performance. I think this was, was the biggest lesson that I learned from one of my boss when youngsters were being hired. because You would be hired for your attitude and not for performance because you don't have a history of performance. I'm assuming that there's not much of a work experience. Uh, one thing, do find, you know, some really amazing people who may be your bosses or, or could be senior folks from whom you can learn a lot. You, you know, this, the theories that you have learned in college is going to be different when it has to be put in, you know, implementation. So just hang out, identify these four or five people. I'm not saying call them mentors, but spend disproportionate time with them. The guys that, you know, you're able to connect, you think, please find those people. I wish, I pray, and I'm sure you will get a boss who will who will have those, uh, you know, personality. But just in case it is not there, please find more and more people to anchor to. Second, and perhaps the only thing which is the biggest learning that I had, independent of what career stage you are in, please continue with the ownership of your career, right? Don't wait, expect somebody else to come in and change your life. It's, it's, it's a multiplier, but it cannot be the base situation. Do your work, uh, keep, stay focused, keep on learning, explore things, but please do not wait for somebody to come from heaven and change your life. Don't wait for that to happen. Don't overthink there, take action there, is, is what I would have to add. Okay, uh, there is a question, how, how to distinguish between heartfelt and required? Pragya, that question is not very, very clear to me. Uh, if you're okay, can you, can you retype? It says how to distinguish between Ah, hard this is the hard goals, um, hard, hard goals basically. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, it is uh, heartfelt and required. Yeah, heartfelt is, you know, just listen to your heart. Uh, just uh, see, do you feel a positive emotion or not? Um, and then it will inform you whether your heart is in it or not. Do you, you know, for example, um, why do you want this goal? You know, what is the reason behind it? Uh, is, do, you feel a, do you feel that your heart is actually pulling you towards that goal or not? Right. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you can or cannot do the job. It just means that is your heart in it or not. Required is a more of a head goal. Uh, is this something that needs to be done? Is this something that is actually required to be done? Or is it something that I'm just doing? What happens? What happens when we do things without a purpose? Right? We lose energy. No? We like to attach work with purpose. So if we are doing things that are repeated on, on a cycle, without seeing the result. All of us like to see immediate results. So ask yourself, is there a result that's coming out of it? Is it required or not? Now, I know the usual challenge to that uh, comment is, I don't have control. I'm asked to do something. <laughs> if it is not required, I have to do it. If you have to do it, even if it is not required, and you're just asked to do it as part of you know a larger picture, you're at least aware of it. Accept it and then still do it, right? And if you are a manager and trying to understand whether this goal is required or not, and you realize it's not required, then take a step back. Smart goals are usually extremely analytical, right? Hard goals will make you ask the tough questions. Is my heart really in doing this? Is this thing actually required? And then once you get through that, you can maybe do smart goals. Heartfelt is emotional. Required is more analytical, thinking about whether this makes any, this is of any use at all. That's the difference. Interesting. There, there's, there's another question. Uh, I, I, I don't have a name here, but it's theoretical but related. What to do if you are Vilat Kohli in the current scenario or superstar going through a performance and mental stress? Um, superstar going through a performance and mental stress. Firstly, 
I wouldn't say any. I I wouldn't see a performance and mental stress situation being any different between anyone and and a superstar. Maybe it's yeah. elevated a little bit. I think our the the scale of it is probably very um, you know it's very personal and very deep across uh, different uh, situations. What advice? Um, <laughs> what advice would we give Virat Kohli? That's a <laughs> that's a not Virat Kohli, but but let me pick up from what you said. One, uh, he, it's end of the day we are all humans, right? Uh, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. It, the scale and and the way it has probably been proliferated because he's a celebrity. Sure. It multiplies it, adding to the pressure. And sure. uh, what what uh, from my personal experience, what do I do when I go through it? I think very important is to talk it out. Give yourself time. Right? There's nobody that I know on this planet who has always had you know upswings in life. It doesn't happen, right? So how any how he would come out of it? I think is is going to prove his mantle even more, which I'm sure he would, right? He would he would have people, he would have uh, uh, family members to speak to. He may hire uh, coaches also. He would have his health coach. He has his sports coach. Not an easy one, but it, it's this can happen in those situations. Take a pause, reflect back. Spend time with yourself, bounce back. There's there's something which I, I the famous saying from the movie Rocky Balboa. It's not about how hard you know uh, you get hit and uh, uh, life is not about getting back and hitting hitting life back. It's about however hard you fall, you have to get up and keep on doing and take life as it comes. Sure. Not about yeah. hitting hard. I think that's 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 very very powerful. That in the Rocky Balboa movie he talks about. Yeah. And, uh, that's something that's gonna be. I'm super. You know, I'm I'm not that much of a sports person, so I don't watch or follow sport that much. But uh, it just came to me that maybe we can just get you know Dhoni in here, and uh, Dhoni talks a lot about process over result. This is something my cousin um, told me the day we were chatting. I don't really know too much about sport, but this one thing I know that uh, Dhoni talks a lot about process over result. So if you get the result in front of you. uh you get really anxious i get anxious if i think about doing something well and i have to achieve the goal but instead just like doni says if i focus on the process and say i'm just going to go through these steps and do it you know and i've decided what the process is and i'm going to stick to the process come what may because i trust the process there is a sense of calm that comes from following a process and that requires this is where the analysis and action thing is there huh? you need to think the, none of this stuff that we are talking about means that don't think okay you have to think But at some to. point in time, you have to translate it actually. So you have to design a process, and you got to follow that process diligently, even when the chips are down. You have to trust the process at that time, and then you get into a space where all you're doing is following a process. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a question Nandita has. Uh, how do you think a person should keep himself or herself motivated in the process of job search when all you see in LinkedIn is people getting placed, and this can always pull us down a little subconsciously? Thank you. That's a powerful question, Nandita. That's a, that's a powerful question. Shami, Very powerful take? question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, this is a. I think the the pandemic. This is the other pandemic, right? Where uh, we see so much of uh, better than uh, normal view of life on social media, and LinkedIn is probably the uh, the, the least uh, uh, abusive in that sense. Because if you go to the other social media, it's like just just too much of uh, only the good parts, right? Anandita, this is where what we are talking about is very, very useful. You need to take a few big decisions. Like, for example, don't see it. We have a choice, right? <laughs> right. So certain things, like for example, I talk about uh, reading news. Okay, I'll take my personal example to connect it back. Um, I don't read any news except one paper. I read the mint. That's it. I took a big decision two years back, three years back. that there's too much choice right i can read news on like a million different places so i don't read news on the phone i don't read any i buy one physical newspaper the mint because it's really interesting to me which is why i don't know anything about sport because there's no sport section in it um but anyway the point is this right uh, limit your feed uh, cut it down uh, remove this from uh, linkedin of course watch your friends and congratulate them and so on but we are observing this world through a very narrow sliver there's much more to this right we are watching a very very there's 750 million people on linkedin right it's a very narrow piece of the world first of all it's only 10% of the world. and on top of that we only get to see the about 8 6 7% of people who are actually posting who are now only posting the good stuff so remember there's a lot more behind that that is unseen yeah so how do you solve this problem 
it's about taking a big decision and saying i'm not going to see it or i'm going to limit my feed or you can unfollow people by the way and uh, you, controlling your feed so we are live in a world where our entire kind of brain is being taken over by the uh, algorithmic feed into our um, uh, tools right this is not the way our brain is uh, has been developed we are being pushed stuff right so we need to push back right we need to take some conscious big decisions to actually control this feed i think it's very very important that you are just like they say you are what you eat in this day and age i think you are what you read on social media so be very conscious of what you are reading but i'm 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 going to pick up i had two dimensions there nandita if if that's okay one tony robin speaks about something called success leaves clues right if you are also seeing a pattern in a set of people see if you can speak to them to understand what they have done right i i i would add to what apart from what sham is saying if it's too much cut the cord but identify few people that you know personally have gone through a difficult journey and done something please go talk to them use linkedin for that reach out they'll be happy to share what worked with them that that is that is my part number one second is uh, you know uh, this is this is an example that i keep on giving every time uh, imagine a situation when you have you, you have booked a cab right but you don't know where you are supposed to go and you sit in the cab and just tell the driver that just take me anywhere now this driver is going around the city and what you notice that everybody who's crossing you overtaking you is going faster in a particular direction and seem to know what they are doing so set your destination create your reference point saying that okay this is what i want now the moment you focus on that you know what sham is saying you will start decluttering what you actually should be seeing it is it is very important know your destination define your destination and uh, there there would be movement at least when when i was growing up i was comparison with others and the social norms were the biggest drivers you know of what we were supposed to do please don't fall into that trap you starting your career stay focused go ahead make a difference take that one step and give it time you know career is like an investment some people get a return earlier faster some people take time but you got to stand there hang on for long term and you will get the result and enjoy the journey don't focus on the destination just enjoy the journey and then go along with that yeah yeah and and the journey point reminds me again about what we just spoke about in terms of the process over the outcome so if someone's talking about what they've achieved try and get a little bit deeper maybe connect with them and understand how the process is much more important than the outcome you uh, you you normally find that there is a lot of deeper deeper there, deeper there are, there are acts of randomness yes but not with everybody find out they would have done scrap something pick that up yes indeed the question that prajwal has uh, this is for you sham uh, definitely looks like a tough question because i said tough but tough question for sham some of us have lost the spark or joy of working after 5 to 6 years of repetitive work what is the way out wow <laughs> yeah yeah it's prajwal what a what a lovely question <laughs> um first one is to acknowledge that you have lost the spark of joy and you know writing it down like ketan says uh, you've asked a question here which is fantastic um accepting it is very important because only when we accept that we have actually lost i i actually wrote it down for myself and i help my clients do this we write it down and we accept it the the joy is gone right the energy the interest it's gone that acceptance has to come number one yeah if that acceptance has come then that energy to take action will come yeah once that acceptance is there that i do not want this anymore then the acceptance will drive action now action the temptation usually is to just drop everything and quit i had the same temptation i was like i'm done i want to just resign and leave i want to jump off the cliff right that's what what speaking that's the heart speaking the heart is saying i'm done the emotions are too strong i want to leave right now that's when the head comes in as well so we have to always balance heart and head the head will start thinking okay let's work it out let's take time let's save some money let's uh, talk to some people right if there is one action i can give you um, to address that uh, loss of joy it's not to take a very uh, big decision in a time of when you are a little low yeah it's very dangerous so big decisions should be thought through so if it is about changing roles do it 
work it out think through and the one action i recommend for you is to look at something that is adjacent to what you do but not a too big of a too much of a step okay in my own journey i moved from engineering to marketing to sales to operations to hr i've taken a one 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 step okay it sounds really not that romantic but actually my advice to you as a way of actually moving through a career to ketan's point it's a marathon right it's not a sprint it's a marathon you know careers are long jobs can be short but careers are long whenever you're thinking you've lost the spark of joy start considering what else you'd like to do think about the vision yes stay true to that vision but think about one adjacent thing if you're doing coding can i do a little bit of marketing around it can i do management can i learn something upskill in something that is adjacent the word adjacent is very important yeah incrementally career moves incrementally have a much much higher chance of success in the long run than big jumps okay you can take big jumps big jumps are risky the reward is higher yes but if you're thinking i've lost this interest in it now instead of jumping completely which is what the heart will ask you to jump try to think of one thing that is adjacent so if you're an hr try to think can i go into kind of learning development if you are in engineering you are in coding why don't i do some application engineering talk to the customer if i am in sales can i go into business development what will happen is it will give you an action that is achievable instead of massive big jumps which are doable but take a lot of effort so that will basically if you are thinking about making a, a big jump then that analysis will literally kind of oh, hold you back so do the analysis but also pick an action that is smaller and gets you moving because getting stuck and then moving is really hard can okay, i prajwal just just uh, putting a sharing a point of view apart from what sham said uh it it is something that i've seen and probably in the last few years have worked with me you know uh, there is so much dependency that we create for our jobs to change our lives and make us happier is is not fun right uh, something that i've learned over my last few years is find ways that makes you happy even if your job for the moment if you're not able to make a decision it's not going to be that easy that you'll quit or make changes but are you doing enough every single day to charge yourself up and keep your whole day cushion ha- happy right keep this 24 hours right keeping that 6 7 hours that people sleep and 9 hours at work are the other hours helping you raise your energy are you doing things that you're passionate about right that is also one way to balance it life will not have everything always right when something is down when something is negating you may have to hang in there but why not multiply and add things which gives you that you know beauty of life make your daily life fulfilling and very very energetic do things that you know i, I enjoy this this kind of conversation i'm learning from it i don't know how to how how well i do it but i enjoy the process sham wrote about something today we will have a good time that was our idea that we would come chat it raises our energy so That's find it. things that gives you that energy and please do it every single day there would be moment you will get a great boss great organization great culture great role but that can change covid changed it right for everything that we had built around us suddenly it it it, it changed so do something to do, keep on doing something which makes you very very energetic every single day so that work is not the biggest impact that it creates on you right i have one more question i think sham can we take that before we close sure sure of course so ajay ajay thank you for that ajay asked what advice could you give when you have transfers to multiple sectors and find it difficult to make the call to make the next next big move thank you ajay no, that's a tough question so sham will take it <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely and to be honest ajay uh, this is a this is a challenge uh, many of us generalists face right uh, this is a problem that if you have traversed through different sectors or if you have picked up like a myriad of skills you know you do a lot of things decently well uh generalists face this issue so for example i believe you know let's uh, take sectors i i did a lot of roles for example sales marketing engineering hr everything so i kind of created that this mix of skills if you've done sectors you may have done fmcg tech you know consumer etc etc oil and gas let's say you kind of done a few different sectors like that automotive etc etc the difficulty we have really is that we have to separate the entirety of our experience from what others need to see this is the difference between who you are as a 
professional in terms of skills and experience and all of that that you bring to the table and who they need to see the brand aspect of it okay so now if you are trying to present yourself in a certain way if you present yourself as somebody who has experience in let's say five separate sectors it's very difficult for me to understand that so we have to make it easier for people to understand my favorite model for this i use it myself i have used it myself and i have asked many uh, people who talk to me from a generalist perspective saying i'm struggling is scott adams the person who created dilbert yeah he came up with this idea 10 years ago and there's various versions of this now i'll explain this if you want to be the best at something anything top 1% by definition 99% of us are not going to be there right it's very very difficult to be the top 1% marketer in the world or top 1% coach in the world whatever etc etc it's hard not that you can't do it just hard 99% of us won't do it so if you have multiple skills what do you do can you find two skills that you are maybe top 25% and mm-hmm. then present yourself as the best possible version of the two together okay so when i learned this and i understood this and i applied this i said i am not the best coach in the world by far i am not the best trainer in the world by far you combine the two and that's my profile that's how i help people my all my time is spent as a coach and a trainer right am i the top 25% coach top 25% trainer and i am kind of top ish on the combination so the idea is find combinations that are interesting to people not the combinations that are interesting to you the combinations that are interesting to me right for example what do we pick so let's say you are an automotive and tech and then you're coming and saying i am the best person at the intersection of the two and i am very very good at using data science and ai in uh, automobile can i find something to do at bmw right so basically you combine things but not too many because i will not be able to understand so combine your sector experience in a combination of let's say two don't not even three only two which places you in a in a very unique perspective for me to really understand you and this is not my rule this is scott adams two times 25% rule i use it all the time in saying that if you have multiple skills can you pick two and this is hard and you cannot prioritize it by what you are good at huh? you have to prioritize it by what people want out there right so if you're good at data science and you get in marketing can you combine the two and create a profile that is interesting to the world so that's my take on that <laughs> yeah powerful and there is a question that uh, uh, i think saurabh is asking uh, how mm. do you you overcome the inferiority complex which develops by default when you're returning after a professional sabbatical in a situation where you get rejected in few interviews which could have been cake walks otherwise yeah it could be painful and uh, I, i definitely can add something here but sham let me hear from no, you no no please uh, ketan uh, you you do you do way more hiring than me so please i will i will add uh, myself so more than hiring i i will tell you i have i've gone through something difficult uh, this oh, right. was yeah. after mm-hmm. after 10 years of my super amazing career the startup that i was working with we decided that they can't have me anymore so we had to let go of the entire team the decision was in a different direction and here i was at my home after you know 10 years of startup i was suddenly at home and i thought that you know it's going to be super easy for somebody like me to get a job but five months this was a forced sabbatical to me five months i struggled to get a job initial one and a half two months i did not even get a call the next few months when i used to get a call i would uh, not convert it and finally fortunately something converted toward the end of five months so and in every time you know this with this gap was increasing i was having this fear you know saying that if i would have continued in a job would this question be asked so the two three things major things that i learned uh, one for all of us you know and my coach used to say be ready for your first 100 rejections okay this independent of what profession what role do you do i think everybody faces rejection my yeah. coach used to tell me be ready for your first 100 rejection it's about preparing yourself mentally that True. what has happened has happened right and uh, this this is a famous saying from a book ikigai it's it's my favorite a lot of you know my my uh, philosophies or whatever i believe in revolve around this here is what it says accept what you can't change 
the courage to change what you must and the wisdom to differentiate between these two now this trust me is is one of the best philosophies whoever is written is 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 on this planet it is about we have to accept now if you have taken a sabbatical for whatsoever reason first is accept it and saying that you may not get the same ground as you could have got when you were playing you know and sham said acceptance is the first step, step to change and the action is the second so one is to first is to accept that second even within that you will have to keep on trying and refining your strategy don't stick to one way to you know just just be there and and this is what changed my life and this is what worked and this gave me the power to believe you know uh, in in something bigger my boss my one of my earlier bosses he used to say there is going to be somebody who will need exactly the same person that you are for the talent that you bring in at one point in time just hang in there and don't lose hope when say hang in there keep trying keep refining and trust me it worked the next break that i got i took a salary dip i i i joined from a i was managing a team i took a individual contributor role but i can tell you those two and a half years at idfc bank were the most fulfilling enriching part of my career i grew the fastest there everything that i lost in terms of you know so called uh, financial impact all got covered i grew well i contributed i get got one of the book, best opportunities at that point in time so tough times do not last of people do hang in there but do speak to people who have done that you know success leaves clues don't don't try to find the world and change the world because it is not favoring you find a way to get the best i'm sure when you have worked for those many years there are many things that you are super awesome at sharpen that up as sham said market it well take it to the right place stay focused and and uh, it, it's tough time so accept that and focus on what you can change and influence and uh, the life is not not linear but it keeps on progressing yes 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 no very well put i'll just uh, summarize that uh, kind of summarize that and one thing that's coming to me is um it's very difficult to after a sabbatical get a job in companies that don't take people from sabbaticals so eventually wherever you get it uh, i'm sure you'll get a role in a company not in spite of your sabbatical but because of your sabbatical so all the best no it is good 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 i i think we are any any questions guys put it up else we will swap we are running 10 10 minutes ahead of schedule but uh, any any closing points from you sham that you think uh you want to leave people with before we close it ah um i think i want to close with time uh the idea of time as an asset um because i think that's where we are heading um good things take time yeah and good things take uh, effort as well and i'd like to say that like my very good friend somil majumdar of sports village says you know if you think of time as an asset give it time uh give it you know ensure that you have taken a decision that you will go through the process and give it the time it needs basically uh take a big decision up front uh, another person i really like to follow is seth godin and he's written a daily blog post for like i don't know 15 years thousands of posts 25 years or something like that so he says 20 years ago or whatever i took a decision i'm going to write a blog post every day so every morning i don't wake up and say am i going to write a blog post no i say what am i going to write about so make a big decision and commit to it right and then what happens is you start doing more you don't think you don't wake i don't wake up in the morning and say am i going to brush my teeth i say i'll brush my teeth right <laughs> i may change my toothpaste and toothbrush but i will brush my teeth in the same way if you can try to get something done uh, and you're trying to stop the overthinking take one big commitment and then stick with it uh, and uh, if you're having trouble sticking with it find an accountability partner stay accountable to yourself but ensure that you don't end up with a day of not doing anything like uh, james clear says in atomic habits if you've made a decision to do pushups do one pushup Yeah. breaking that push up streak will be very hard to restart so just do one literally one push up right so if you are trying to get into the doing mode then do don't judge the doing do one enough 10 great 100 wonderful 
but do one don't miss that streak and uh, if we stop doing that restarting the engine right i like to say that you can't restart a rocket by just letting it sit you can't restart a rocket by resting it you need to refuel it and that refueling it and getting it going again is a big job so if you are getting moving continue to keep moving and all the best to everybody thanks for having me here thank you so much sir my head somewhere movement leads to momentum so all the best guys thank you so much for your time thank you so much for joining in and putting across those questions i will see you guys soon and you have a phenomenal weekend thank you so much sham for taking out time thank you sure. thank you i had a good day thank you thank you me too bye